go to over to my screen here. What's that? All right. So there we go. what was that? Oh, that was me. My apologies. Okay. I'll mute myself. All right. Let me make all of you larger here. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to kind of show you. I, I've taught you the basics now it, with ease. You sort of have got the, the general gist of it. You can probably do everything you'll need to do for the project at the moment. You, you, I've showed you everything you need. Uh, so right now I'm going to just show you a couple of like extra little detail things that you are you may or may not. I mean, Lance, you might use some of this stuff because you, you're probably going to have multiple loudspeaker clusters in your project, but um, but a lot of the stuff I'm showing you today is going to come into play more with the final project. Um, so here I have the Stevens Center. And I've got the whole center cluster in here, and I've also added some front fills in. And I just kind of want to show you how you wrangle all of that and how you figure all of that out. So uh, let me go over here and let's just let's assume for the moment that I've just put in the one loudspeaker for the center cluster, and I just want to see what it's going to do. Uh, so pull this up. And I'm going to plot this. And let's see. I want that one. OK, so there it is. There is my, I believe it's a DMB Q10 uh, sitting there pointed towards the back of the orchestra. And I'm thinking, well, OK, that's, that's good. But I've still got all this area in the balcony that's not being covered. And I've got this area in the front that's not being covered. Uh, so that's fine. Let's, so then I would go and I would add in another one for the, for the balcony, All right? So I'll do like a two of them, one pointed up, one pointed it, pointed down. Let's see what that, what that does. So, oops, not that one. I want this one. So now I'm going to add the, so I'm going to add a top one into this. And let's see what we end up with. Right, there we go. So uh, that's going okay. Let me look at that top one by itself because I do have these like corners in the back that aren't quite getting as good a coverage. So let me just run the top one by itself and see uh, what's going on there. I'm moving too fast. Hold for sound. Ooh, did I crash it? Maybe I crashed it. That'll be cool. I'm just going to wait for a second here. I think you might have crashed it. I think I did. Does not look optimistic. We really do be like that. <laughs> Sometimes it just happens. All right, let's see if I can get this back here. Come on, little buddy. You can do it.
It's really stuck on me. Try doing this again. Hey, Jason. So I yeah. like, I do have another question. Um, okay. Are we submitting our room? Yeah. So uh, I'll show you that. I'll show you today what what I need you to do. Okay. Um, well, I want what I need. I want you to do is to sort of share share with me your packed project. Okay. Um, and then and then I'll look at it. Okay. Are we so if I, just putting both of our speakers in there? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll show you if I can get this going again. I'll show you what what I need you to do. Oh, okay, here we go. Something's back. Oh, I did it. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, there we are. Um, I'm back. Here's what I'm going to do just to make things a little happier. I'm going to relaunch this file, close ease and come back up again. I think part of it is all of this video screen capturing I'm doing is <laughs> really messing with my graphics here. Okay. I'm going to reboot my windows real quick here. Come on, you don't need any of that text. Yeah. Arku. Hi. So, so I, I, I do think some of my problem is because I'm doing like, I'm doing a screen share and two screen recordings <laughs> simultaneously here. <laughs> it, it, it has been surprisingly taxing on my computer working this way um, these last few weeks. I think that's part of what's happening. Are you doing the, the, uh, the regular screen recording for YouTube as well? Well, I, I've been running both because sometimes one doesn't work <laughs> no. um, for various reasons. So yeah, I'm, I'm running two separate ones. I'm doing the Zoom cloud recording and then the I show you capture at the same time. All right, let me let this Settle for a second here. So this is another another thing that is just a good tip when you're, especially when you're starting windows like this is let it sit for a minute or two before you try and do anything. Um, because there's all kinds of stuff happening in the background that it's, it's you know, Microsoft's going to try to fake you out because it wants you to think that this computer's booted faster than it did. And so it pulls up your desktop screen uh, and you're like, oh, great, that's all working. Uh, but in reality, there's all this other stuff that still hasn't quite booted yet. <laughs> it's still happening in the background. So I, I always try to like make sure that it's done. And one of, the, one of your tips, by the way, is one of the reasons why I had you run parallels, if those of you that are doing parallels in windowed mode, is you can see all these activity indicators up here. And if you see like this little chip thing go red, uh, that means like stop, just you know, that the CPU is working real hard on something right now and just like give it a minute and let it chill. Um, and I just kind of watch for some of these, these blinky lights to start blinking a little bit less before I uh, get moving. But all right, I think I'm ready now. So let's bring this up, see if I can get this file going again. Okay. 
Hey, there's my file. Okay, let's see if my room comes up. There it is. Okay, let's try area mapping now, see if I can get this. Okay, so I was attempting to map the balcony fill that I put in up here. So center cluster top, right? Let's see what we get here. Okay. Yeah, okay, so the thing I was looking for was I wanted to see like if that corner problem was something real and it looks like it is. Um, however, I'm with, still within my six dB, you see that? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so I'm not gonna worry too much about that. But if I, um, you know, if I wanted to, if I had the time and the money and the labor and all that kind of stuff, I, I might decide to hang some fills back here in the back of the balcony if, I, if it turns out I need it. Okay, so this looks pretty good, right? Like this is filling the balcony pretty okay. So let's now try to plot my middle one and my top one together and see what they do together. So I'm gonna add the mid into here. I'm just hitting control by the way and then clicking on the one that I wanna add to the calculation. So now it says center cluster mid and center cluster top are gonna to get plotted. So I'll click okay and we'll see what we get now. All right, so that looks all right, yeah? Not too shabby. Uh, I'm still, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, see, I'm almost to seven here in the back. Um, so I, we'll, we'll see what we can do there. Um, one thing I could consider is I might want to just turn down this middle one a little bit, right? It could be that what's happening is because I know that the middle one and the top one overlap a little bit in the front of the balcony, they could be summing together to create an extra boost here and that's making this back go a little quieter. So what I could do is let's go over to here and let's turn down that middle one a little bit if I can here. Oh no, the edit window is freezing on me now. It's not my day. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna shut off one of my recordings. We're gonna fly blind here for a minute. I'll keep the Zoom one going, see if I can speed up this computer at all. Back blaze, trying to back up right now. Yes. That could be part of my problem. <laughs> okay, let's turn that off. See how we're doing now. A little bit better. All right, I'm going to 
try starting fresh here with parallels. See if I can get it to be a little happier. So I'm gonna quit this and quit this. And I'm gonna quit AutoCAD. That might be making things a little harder than it has to be. Okay. Now let's see how we're doing over here. Better. Okay, let's bring this all back up now. I do have to say not a lot of things will make me miss just like a straight up PC with windows on it and working in parallels. <laughs> yeah, parallels is nice um, in a lot of ways, but it's obviously you make some compromises. I just wish it was a PC. That's that's definitely why I went with the um, just getting a PC. However, that doesn't well, my PC is uh, thirteen hundred miles away. Um, well, yeah, but having a dedicated PC does not stop ease from wanting to crash, just for different reasons. Yeah, yeah, ease is is finicky no matter what, but. Um, but yeah, I'm, I don't know if this is an issue. I think, I, I think my problem right now is that I'm trying to do a whole lot of things, a whole lot of difficult things at the same time on my computer right now. Um, and that is very confusing for my computer. <laughs> Have you seen any of the, or messed with any of the Ease 5 beta stuff? No, not at all. I saw it the other day and I was like, ooh, I should try this, but I can't try it because I don't, I'm not the person that actually holds the Ease account and you have right. to you know, like plug in and sign right. up for the beta program. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm not really interested in <laughs> having that. Yeah, that if the released of... version works this well, what's the beta going to be like? Yeah. I mean, it's a good point, but hopefully it's fun and new and not as convoluted as this version of Jesus. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Okay, uh, let's try again here. So, this class demo it is. Oh, that's right. I was gonna. I was gonna tweak the level. I was going to show you how to tweak the level. Okay, so um, there's my center cluster mid. So I'm going to right click on it and go to properties. Uh, and here's that window that you've seen before. And remember, I told you to do all to max, right? You remember that? To have, yeah. have it be as loud as it can be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now go under level here. and I'm going to say minus one, minus two dB. And then I hit apply. So I, I do that and it just takes all those frequencies down by one dB increments, okay? Uh, now I'll save over here. And I'll save over here. And we'll go back to area mapping. And let's see now uh, what happens. So I want the mid and I want the top. Okay, so let me count now. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's, it got a little bit better. Um, But 
but now it looks like like this area is 97.6 and this is 98.6. So I think I probably need to kick it back up one dB. Um, so let's try that. I'll take it back up one dB. Apply. Save. Save. Back here. Yes, acquire project data. Recalculate, yes. Okay, so uh, that's probably, given this configuration, as good as I'm gonna get, uh, which is not bad, actually. The only issue is in this back corner here, the balcony, it's maybe, you know, getting a little quieter than I would like, but that's at 4K. Um, you know, if I go to two kilohertz, it might get better. Let's see what two kilohertz looks like. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we're, we're pretty consistent, actually. All right, so uh, that's just something that I'm gonna make a note for that I'm not maybe super worried about that at the moment, but it's right at the edge. I might wanna do something about that someday. Uh, all right, so let me go back to my 4K and let's look on the other side of this. So now I've got this area down here. And uh, in this case, you know, I want, ideally you want the center cluster to cover everything. Right, that's where you get most of your gain. Cause you might be looking at this and you say, oh, I could fill that in with front fills. Um, and maybe you could, but uh, you usually can't get a ton of gain out of front fills. So I'd like to get a down fill from my center cluster that can go and fill in that spot. Okay, uh, so hopefully I can get some more gain that way out of it. So let's, so I, if I go back to my edit window, you can see that, uh, let's see, there we go. So I put one in and it's just another one of those Q10s and I'm pointing it you know, pretty far down to try to hit that area. So let's see what I get now if I plot with all three of these now. So because I put them in a group, I can now just go to my loudspeaker group window and say and select CC and it'll automatically do all of them, including the subs, which I also put in which usually you don't worry about subs, but these are directional subs. Uh, so you can plot them and they can do cool stuff. But I'm plotting 4K, so I'm not gonna see anything, but it's part of the group, so it's gonna do it anyway. So I'll click OK, let's see what we end up with. I go, oh, well, hmm, it certainly filled it in, but now I've got a difference of, you know, a peak of 103 here in the front area and then I go all the way down to 91 here, which is- and What was the adjustment that you made in between there? I, I added the downfill, okay? Oh, okay, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I just put in a downfill to fill in that area there. Um, and now I've got a 12 dB range between my front row and my back row balcony, which is not super great. Uh, not any, I, any ideas why I have that problem? Just because you put the hot spot, you aimed it much farther down. Well, yeah, but that's where it needed to be, right? That was the area I was trying to fill. Uh, the main thing is that downfill is just closer, right? So it's, it's traveling a lot less distance than everything else. And so it's arriving at the seats louder. So what I need to do is I need to turn that downfill, turn it down a good bit uh, to mimic the behavior of the ones that are farther away. So I need to turn it down by about as much as it would need to be if it were as far away as everything else. So if I go back over here, you know, you look at this, you see that the distance this thing's going compared to the distance that my balcony fill is going, it's, it's almost a double of distance, right? So I'm gonna guess six dB. Because that downfill is almost half the distance away. So I'm just gonna do my minus one six times on my downfill, one, Two, three, four, five, six. Hit apply and save. And we'll go over here and hit save. And then we'll come over here and acquire data. 
Recalculate map, yes. Okay, so uh, I think I overshot just a little bit. Um, I think I'm, I'm gonna kick it back up one more, d one dB and see where we get. But now it's looking better, right? So uh, let me go back here and I'm gonna kick it up one more dB. See what happens here. better. Um, so now it's looking like my loudest thing is maybe that 99.2. That's 99.1. Yeah. So 99 and then my quietest thing is 91. So that's, it's not quite the 60 B that I would like, but I'm, but I'm awfully close here. I am, I am definitely getting there. Um, this is probably going to be fine for most general use, but if I was going to do a, a more detailed like musical reinforcement show, I'd probably want to add some fills here in the back of the balcony just to pick that up. And then I could, I could collapse that down a little bit. Um, and then I do have, you know, it's tailing off a little bit up here as well. And that could be solved with some front fills. Um, so I'm pretty well there. So the, the main thing I wanted to show you is that ability to kind of control the levels between different loudspeakers in your system. So that, that can help get your, get your stuff to plot much cleaner and much better. Cause that's what you're gonna have to do in real life. You're gonna have to turn down that downfill a little bit. So you can do that in ease as well. Uh, okay. So now let's say I'm gonna add some front fills in to this thing. Uh, so let's plot those. I've already put them in. And I will show you what they look like. Uh, actually, I've got a group for them. All right, there's my front fills. Uh, the reason that this is plotting, it's not plotting here is because of the angle, like the loudspeakers, the front fills at this for this is at, are actually hitting underneath the listening surface. Um, so that's what's happening there. That's why it's not plotting there. There's a couple of ways you can deal with that. Um, you can, for example, if, if I go in here uh, and go to items, I can say, let's map on the seats instead of the ears. So instead of the audience areas, map on the seats because the, the seats are lower. Uh, and so let's try that. Oh, hang on. On seats. I've got to, I've got to pick some. Oh, actually, I don't have any seats, do I? That's why. I'd have to go into a room mapping to do that. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so I'm just gonna not worry about that right now. It's just the it's just the front fills, and I'm not counting on them being super loud back here. And I can kind of guess at what's going on here. Um, but if you did want to see it, you could go into room mapping, which I can show you that window, um, and you can see you'll you'll see why I don't like using it. So room mapping is a lot like area mapping, except it tries to be a lot slicker. <laughs> So this is trying to show you an actual 3D view. So you have to kind of get it oriented the right way to where you can get the angle to see everything. So maybe like that. And then I can do the same thing here. So I'll plot my front fills this time. We'll, we'll do 4K. And let's see what I get here. Still doing that. Now, if I run it again, I might be able to get it to plot it on the floor. Yeah, so I go on faces now instead of on areas. And uh, 
I don't know which face is which, so I'll just select all of them for now. And let's plot it. There we go. Um, so now it's run it, but it's kind of messed it up because now it's including the stage in this plot. Um, so I would, you, but it's now at least plotting on here because it, it can actually see that angle. But the other thing I don't like about this view is it doesn't let you do the ISO lines, which I think are really helpful. So I usually don't plot in this view ever really. Uh, all right, so that was my front fills. They're fine, no big whoop. I've got them set up pretty well. Uh, but what happens when I turn the whole system on here? Oops, come back. So let's plot everything. So I want both my front fills and my center cluster. Let's see what we get here. All right, so uh, it's looking okay, actually, um, that this little edge here in the corners is getting a little bit better. Um, but I might actually, I might want to see if I can get my front fills to be just a tidge louder. Um, but they're, they're, they're looking okay. But I could manipulate the level if I wanted to. So you can kind of see how a little, even a small little fill can kind of make a difference there on those corners. Um, and I can do the same thing with, with some balcony fills if I put those in. Uh, but that, that helps quite a bit. Um, even though that's not really what we use the front fills for, that is a nice little side effect. Uh, so the other thing you want to look at is now let's just kind of plot some different frequencies here. So here is 500 hertz. Uh, let's go to one kilohertz. So you can see as you go through, these things change pretty dramatically. Um, and you kind of have to think about that stuff. Um, but uh, always remember to kind of count these lines. So I go one, two, three, four, five. Hey, even though that looks different, it's still within six, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm still there, even though that little corner is off a little bit. That's always going to be there in this scenario. Um, so even though it looks different, always make sure you're counting those ISO lines before you freak out too much. Okay. Oh, I'm starting to see my front fills at 2K. Look at that. There they are. Uh, so that's, that's kind of basically it. So that's the one thing I wanted to show you is that ability to control the levels of the different loudspeakers because that can really help. A lot of, I see a lot of people struggle with that when things don't look right. Um, and it's because they haven't really manipulated the levels. So you may need to do that. All right, so uh, what do I need you to do for your project? So once you've got this figured out, um, like if you're gonna put both different clusters or different options in the same file, that's fine. Just create two different loudspeaker groups for them so that I can plot them using those group settings. If it's just one loudspeaker for each cluster, then you don't need to do that, I'll, I can select them. But here's the thing with, with sharing an ease file. So if, if you wanna share an ease file with somebody, uh, it's a little tricky because, uh, as we know, there's a lot of files involved here and they're all in different places. So it's not as simple as just like going and finding the file and dragging it into, you know, onto a flash drive or something and putting it in there because you got to make sure that you're getting all the files that go with it. So the way to do this is... Sorry, Jason, real quick. I think you kind of touched on it, but I did want to make sure, like, we are allowed to spec more than one speaker in whatever our system turns out to be. Yeah, you're not looking for a single speaker, or are you? You can do a cluster if you want. Um, I think, like, if you're doing patrons, you... I, I mean, you yeah, utterly unnecessary, but I did want yeah. to look at it. Yeah, play around with it if you want. Not, yeah, I don't, I don't okay. really care. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm less interested in the result here than I am in just the evidence that you have learned how, know to, how use, to use these. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I, we're going to focus on the result in the final project, right? <laughs> so whether or not what you came up with is a good idea or a bad idea, I don't really care at, at this stage. I really just want to see that, oh, look, I can draw a room, I can put speakers in, I can plot them, and I can see what happens, right? Um, okay, great. Yeah. Okay. So uh, any other questions? All right. So here's what you got to do to share an ease file. You're going to go to the file menu 
and you are going to select pack project. And what pack project does is it goes and it finds all the different files that are associated with this ease project and it puts them into a single zip file for you. Okay. Uh, so you're going to select pack project. And of course it brings up this other program here. And it's going to ask you, Hey, where do you want to put this thing? Uh, and this you can save anywhere you want, right? You're going to share this anyway. So you may as well, I'm, I'll put it on desktop. Uh, you give it a file name and then you hit save. And it's going to ask you for what options you want to do. Uh, I would just include all of these checkboxes, leave them all on, click OK. And it's going to go through this whole shebang. It's going to take a, few, a second or two. Uh, and it's going to say that it's like a log here of all the things it went and found that put into your file. So it went and found all of these different things. It went and found all your last speaker files, all the things that are involved in this, and it put them all in there. So uh, you can say, all right, sounds good. Uh, and notice you have two files here. You've got now a zip file, and you have this thing, which is this, this LST file, and that's the log, right? That's that log file that tells you what went into this zip file. Uh, now, here's what you're going to do. You're going to take this zip file, and this is what you're going to upload to Canvas. Okay? Now, if someone gives you one of these zip files, like, for example, perhaps Jason Romney, gives you a zip file for DeMille Theater or something, uh, then here's what you want to do with that. You do not want to unzip that file, OK? Because uh, then it ruins the whole thing. Uh, instead, what you want to do is you want to go to the file. You want to open Ease, and you go to the File menu, and you're going to say Import slash Export. And from here, and I'll show you this on Friday when we go through all these things, but uh, from here, uh, you're going to go to File menu, and you're going to select Install Packed Project. And uh, it says, Waste Data of Stevens Class Demo? Uh, that sounds really dramatic. But uh, what it's basically saying is, hey, you have a file open right now in Ease. Are you done with that file? Because I'm about to erase it from memory. Um, now, erasing it from memory does not erase it from your computer. It just erases it from RAM. It's just like clearing the cache, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but something along, something about the translation from German to English on this thing, it ends up with waste the data, you know, and, and it sounds like something you definitely don't want to do, but you're you going to have Germans. to. You're going to have to. So, uh, I'm going to hit yes. And then it's going to say, okay, tell me what where this file is that you want to pull in. Uh, and so you would select the zip file. So this is one from a show I did. Uh, and you're going to click Open. And it's going to ask you something. It's going to ask you, where do you want me to install this project? And it's going to default to the place where the zip file is. That is not where you want to put it, though. OK? You want to put it in your regular place where you put your, your ease files. So you're going to go to you hit this path button and you're going to go back up to users, public documents, ease data, uh, and you can click OK. Now, here's the next thing you're going to want to do. Pay very close attention. You now have this path, but you also want to add to this a folder name. OK? Because if you don't put a folder name here, it's just going to scatter all these random files into your, into your root directory for your ease4 documents, which you don't want to do. So I'm going to say this is my import demo. And then I click OK. And so, OK, it did it. So uh, now if I go and look in my ease folder, Oops, not that one, this one. There, see, I've got this uh, folder here for, imp oh, I forgot to put it in projects. Darn it. Okay, that's all right, I can, I can't, this I can move, so I can move that into projects. Um, and then I can open it back up. So I forgot to add that projects path. 
Uh, but anyway, now I put it in there and all the files are in there and now I can use this file and now I know where it is, it's in the right place and everything's good to go. Okay, so that's how you move an ease project from one computer to another computer. Uh, don't just do a save as onto a flash drive and then, or you know, onto an email or something like that. Don't do that. Do that pack project, get the zip file, move the zip file around because the zip file will have everything with it that you need. Okay, any questions about that process? All right, so that's what I want you to do is before Friday, finish messing around with this thing and give yourself at least two options for a center loudspeaker or a loudspeaker cluster for the theater that I gave you. Um, and I would just have both options in the same ease file because I'm, I'm smart enough to toggle between those two things. Um, and you're not sharing more than one file with me. Then do that pack project, upload that zip file to uh, Canvas, and then I'll be able to download it, and then I can install it onto my system, and then we can look at them together on Friday. Okay, sound good? Any questions about that? Not about that. Okay. But I have the the error code that it keeps sending me. Okay, let's hear it. So the the error that it keeps sending me says uh, ease four point four check data uh, a sim speaker model used in sim. Ah. Yes, now I know exactly what's going on. Wasn't that the same thing Lance was getting? Last so week? yeah, that's not that, that happened to Lance too that, that last week. So what happens is uh, some loudspeakers don't work in when the room is in symmetry mode. Oh. Uh, and the reason for that is that um, it's at the manufacturer's discretion how much data they put into that ease file for the loudspeaker. And sometimes if they, this is now, this is my understanding of how this works. I might not have a complete picture, but uh, they could actually do what's called like a quarter of the whole sphere and then tell Ease to just interpolate the rest of it. Okay. Um, and depending on how they've loaded that in, Ease may not be able to figure out the other side of it if you're in a symmetrical room. Mm, okay. So uh, you have to turn off the room symmetry in order to use that loudspeaker model. Okay. And, cool. and the, the, the issue there is the reason like it's the reason that like gives you that, that thing, but it doesn't really it still let you move on is because what that is is a warning that if you do it this way and then you try to plot directivity, it's not gonna be able to plot it. Okay. So that's why you haven't like crashed it or anything. It's just giving you this error saying, hey, that check data is where East checks the data to see if there's any problems with it if you ever wanna run any plots or predictions. Yeah. And you have a problem because you got a loudspeaker model that can't it can't figure out the other sides of it because of the symmetry. So here's the here's the fun here's the fun thing that I still don't really understand fully is that I can I can put it in there and like I can, it, it will work for like you know five ten minutes I yeah. hit a button and then it's just like <laughs> yeet you don't get to count. Yeah, yeah, it's because it. every time it wants to ch it runs yeah. a check data then it finds it, yeah. that error. It finds that error which sucks but then i found that you know putting it in a corner for a little bit recently found out that if you re-aim it it stops doing the issue don't know why that is uh if you just kind of just like just like nudge it a little bit just give it a little yeah bit, it starts it's working again and i don't know what that means but it also shows me the red traffic light um Grayson, it's it's because you made the software so mildly unhappy that every time you poke it, it gets a little bit happier and works for a second again, and then it gets unhappy again. That's the so every time you keep poking it, it forgets that you did something fundamentally wrong. Okay, so let me show you what you have to do. Peter's dumb. So here's what you got to do. What's uh, So once you have, once you're sure you've drawn the room correctly, okay, and that's all good, then you're going to go to. Uh, room data so right click on your area here select okay. room data and you this room symmetric you're going to uncheck yeah. that box see how that's unchecked right now uncheck yeah. that and uh it's going to give you a, a message that's going to sound scary again uh because it's going to say hey like we're going to have to create all these extra points and everything now you're going to make me like do all this work uh and you say yeah that's what i need you to do uh and then it'll stop giving you that error um Okay, cool. The downside to doing this, by the way, is that once you turn off the symmetry mode, you can't turn it back on again. Yeah. 
Um, and so if you now decide you want to add more points or draw some more surfaces, you got to do them the hard way now, which That's is you got to draw- a couple more points though. You yeah, can... you just have to draw all of them. It's not going to automatically reflect everything for you anymore. You can turn symmetry mode back on. It'll just then duplicate every single point that you have in your project. Right. That's what I mean. It's, I mean, you can. That's, that's true. You can. You just really don't want to yeah. because it's going to like give you, it's going to be uh, really annoying. Uh, green, so speaking, uh, you can. Freaking why would you? But... <gasps> the neighbors are leaving. Anyway, <laughs> it's green now. Everything's good yeah. in my neighborhood. Yeah. So that'll fix your problem. Sweet punk rock. Thank you. Okay. For any any other questions? Uh, no. All right. So um, I think we are ready to go then. So what will happen is uh, on Friday, right? Today's Monday. So uh, on Friday, let me just review my schedule here and make sure that I'm telling you the right things. So Friday the 17th, we will do uh, a homework review of the ease. Now I've scheduled two days to look at these ease projects just because, you know, depending on how many issues we have, it might take us two days to go through all of them for all of you. Um, but I do want- us doing real well then. <laughs> well, it always just... takes us two days to get through all of our projects. Easy. So I just want, I want to make sure that, because there's a whole lot to be learned by looking at each other's project and ease. Um, and seeing what issues you all run into and everything. So I did book two full days for that. Uh, so that's what we'll plan to do Monday or Friday and Monday. If for some reason we're able to book through it and we don't have you know, as many issues as I think we'll have and we get done and we can do it in one day, then fine. That, that means we just get more time to work on the final project. Uh, but either way, uh, I don't anticipate us, you know, looking at all these ease projects on Friday and still having time to chat. So I don't think that'll happen, but it could be that on Monday the 20th, I can roll out this final project to you. Uh, hopefully in the last few minutes of class at least um, and sort of talk you through, excuse me, what that's gonna look like. Now, uh, and after that, then we're basically just working on this project for the rest of the semester. But this is not the kind of project where you are going to want to be able to just sort of like go away and do it for a couple of weeks and come back and deliver it and it'll be brilliant. Uh, because the project is really all about you connecting the dots for everything that we've talked about this entire semester. And you're going to have a hard time doing that and you're going to need my help doing that. So uh, here's what, so I just want you to prepare for what we're doing schedule-wise. I'm still going to do class those days, even though it says work on the system design project. My intention is that, you know, you're going to work on it during that time, during class time, Mondays and Friday mornings, when I'm here, we can have Zoom going, um, and we probably won't record those sessions, but uh, just so that, you know, as you're working on it, I, I can look at your screen, I can give you help, we can compare notes and everything. Because just like we do work days in regular class. Exactly. Like, I still want us to do that because... Like if you just disappear and work on this project for two weeks and bring it in, you're going to be really disappointed with the result because it's complicated and it's hard and, and you're going to need to ask questions and get help. Okay. So just be prepared for that. Just because it says on the schedule, we're, we're working on the project. That doesn't mean we're not going to meet. Okay. All right. That is all I got. So I will uh, definitely see you guys on Friday if, if not sooner. So if you run, if you need any help between now and then, just let me know and we'll set up time to, to go through it. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Sounds you. Good. Thanks, Jason. Thank All you. Right. I will see you on Friday. Adios. Bye.